Steve, how are you? This is, Good. Um, look weird. Make sure that you don't have a conflict of interest down right. the road. And we do need your address on that. Like, okay. We don't need your gross income. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Okay. All right. George, did you sign up to speak? Let's light this. Oh. <clears throat> My microphones are on. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I want to call this meeting of the Durham City Council to order on October the 15th, 2018, uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. And I certainly want to welcome all of you all here tonight and are very, very glad uh, that you're here with us. And now I hope you'll join me in a moment of silent meditation. Thank you. Councilmember Reese, would you please lead us in the pledge? Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. We have a Boy Scout troop with us tonight. It is, I had a note, disappeared. Uh, yes, here we go, Boy Scout Troop 451. If folks want to come up and uh, help us with the pledge, that'd be great. Appreciate it. And everyone else, if it's your practice to, to do so, and if you're able, please rise as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member, and thank you, Scouts. We're glad to have you here. And Scout Masters. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Shul. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson. Here. Councilmember Alston. Here. Councilmember Caballero. Here. Councilmember Freeman. Present. Councilmember Middleton. Here. And Councilmember Reese. Here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. And now we're going to move to our ceremonial items, of which we have several wonderful ceremonial items tonight. Uh, and we're going to begin with Community Planning Month. And I'm going to ask Councilmember Vernetta Austin if she will join me at the microphone to do the honors. And I believe Pat Young from the Planning Department is here to, um, to receive this. Whereas change is constant and affects all cities, towns, suburbs, counties, urban and rural areas, and whereas community planning and plans can help manage this change in a way that provides better choices for how people work and live. And whereas a key component of community planning is the involvement of all Durham citizens in making choices that determine the future quality of life in Durham. And whereas the full benefits of planning requires public officials and citizens who understand, support, and demand excellence in planning and plan implementation. And whereas the month of October is designated as National Community Planning Month, throughout the United States of America and its territories. And whereas the American Planning Association 
and its prof professional institute, the American Institute of Certified Planners, endorsed National Community Planning Month as an opportunity to highlight the contributions planning makes to the quality of our community and environment. And whereas the celebration of National Community Planning Month gives us the opportunity to publicly recognize the participation and dedication of the members of Durham's appointed and elected boards and commissions and other citizen planners who have contributed their time and expertise to the improvement of the city and county of Durham, North Carolina. And whereas the Durham City County Planning Department was created 30 years ago on July 1st, 1988, and we recognize the many valuable contributions made by professional planners of the Durham City County Planning Department and extend our heartfelt thanks for the continued commitment to public service by these professionals. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2018 as Community Planning Month in Durham and hereby urge all citizens to take special note of this observance in conjunction with the celebration of National Community Planning Month. Witness my hand and the corporate seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina, this 15th day of October, 2018. Thank you so much, Council Member Alston and Mayor Shule and members of Council. Um, on behalf of the 60 plus uh, resident planners uh, that serve on one of the six boards and commissions that you all and the county commissioners appoint to help advise you on planning issues and on behalf of our professional planning staff, Really want to thank you for the honor of this recognition. Um, as you heard from Councilmember Austin, this was the um, 30th anniversary of the merging of the city and county planning departments, and we believe that cooperation and coordination between the county and city uh, pays dividends for our community every day. So in celebration of that anniversary, we're going to be conducting 30 community planning events over the next year, 30 for 30, if you will. We may have stole that idea from somebody else. but. Uh, we are going to have a high school, um, a group of high school students uh, participate in a mock planning commission. And that's something, an event we've done in the past. It's always a great event and gets uh, students very engaged and interested in planning concepts. We're going to have an open house as we have over the last several years. We're going to have a, a lecture series that's going to get kicked off um, in December with Professor uh, Dr. Andrew Whittemore of UNC Chapel Hill, who is an uh, outstanding uh, urban planning professor who's written extensively about racial bias and land use planning and what we can try to do about it going forward. And most importantly, we have over a dozen events that are um, community events, meeting people where they are, uh, homeowners associations, tenants rights groups, community organizations, um, just meeting with them and listening to them, answering their questions and talking about community planning and um, continuing to enjoy engaging with our incredible community here in Durham. So these will dovetail with the kickoff of our new comprehensive plan and of course our efforts to continue to expand housing choices, and you'll see a lot more about that over the coming months. So thanks again for your support of community planning and for this honor. We sure appreciate it. Thank you, Council Member Austin, and thank you very much, Pat. Those sound like fantastic events uh, to be held over this next period of time, and I, I just am really excited about that. Uh, and now we're going to uh, welcome Dr. Elaine Hart Brothers up to uh, this microphone uh, for Community Engagement Month. Uh, Dr. Hart Brothers is president of the board of the Community Health Coalition. And if you have others, Dr. Hart Brothers, that you would like to have with you, please have them come on up and, and join you. See, come on up, sure. Okay, good. Uh, I'm going to read this program, and then I'm going to turn this. I'm going to read this proclamation. I'm going to turn this over to you, uh, Dr. Hart Brothers. Whereas health programs and services should be supported and endorsed by the communities and populations identified to receive the services, with an invitation and opening for community representatives at the table. And whereas health programs and services with a goal of eliminating health disparities and increasing health equity must be based on input and needs identified by the community with all participants considered as experts. And whereas the extent and time frame of health services and programs should be communicated clearly to the community and disseminated in a timely manner, 
And whereas health disparities identified through collaboration with community and or community-based organizations need to be measured, tracked, and reported at regular intervals, and whereas recognizing the value that community partners bring to the table, when possible and mutually agreed upon, be compensated for their valuable input in a timely manner, and whereas resources and skill sets should be shared and made available to enhance all partners with the intention that partnership relationships should be long-term and continued if the same or similar purposes are pursued, and whereas the Community Health Coalition that brings together the resources of existing organizations, agencies, and others, including churches and community groups, now therefore I, Stephen M. Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2018 as Community Engagement Month in the City of Durham, and hereby encourage and call upon the citizens of Durham to observe same. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina, this the 15th day of October 2018. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor, for officially recognizing the unique, crucial, trustworthy role of community-based organizations in Durham, North Carolina. Will the Community Health Coalition stand? Some of our members are here. Please stand. And our special partners. We have different partners to stand also. We were founded in 1989 looking forward to our 30th year and our celebration, May 30th, 2019. We're looking forward to our vision, a society in which all people live long, healthy, active lives, full of purpose and promise. The Community Health Coalition reaches 34,000 people through education with health tips, health promotion, advocacy, organ donation, health management, and referrals. We left a few people outside, they're coming in now, so that if someone asked, the mayor could say, we're outstanding. <laughs> so I left them outside. All right. Very nice. We are the green machine. Our mission led us to the proclamation. Our mission being the Community Health Coalition and its partners strive to achieve health equity and to eliminate racial health disparities in Durham and the surrounding areas. We are here today to boldly advocate for a share of the resources in planning, data, implementation of programs. We want true inclusion, and we focus on African Americans and the underserved population. We feel government institutions like Duke and other organizations and large corporations cannot truly heal society. Please give the citizens a sense of belonging and partnership of power. As you know, Mayor, transportation, safety, housing, police, arts, waste, environment, they're all health related. And we at the coalition work with the areas that have been reached by priorities and health assessment, mental health, health access, diabetes, uh, mental health we mentioned, food access, these are all priorities. These are what we do. We cover and we educate. Black Lives Matter. And not just for violence, but in cancer, cardiac deaths, infant deaths, where mortalities are linked to racial inequalities. The challenge is to act, not just support with words. The nonprofits are threads that are woven together for our city. The Community Health Coalition is of and for the community. Also, I want the city council and the mayor to realize that funds are needed to support these community-based organizations and programs. So thank you. Health is wealth. A healthy community includes you. Thank you. All right, thank you so very much. Dr. Hart Brothers, and for your group for being here, I, I see you included former Mayor Pro Tem Cora Cole McFadden amongst your group, which we do not hold against you. <laughs> we always welcome her here. It's wonderful to see her here back in the chambers. Um, and now I'm going to ask uh, Mayor Pro Tem Jillian Johnson if she will join me uh, for the uh, presentation of National Disability Employment Awareness Month. I'm sorry. 
You're, you're after this. I'm sorry, DJ. <laughs> Apologize, didn't see there. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, everyone. Sorry. I believe that the folks from uh, Marcella, Marcella Skirlock Jones, okay. please come forward. Are there other people? Marcella, are there other people that are coming forward with you? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for being here, and uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the opportunity to present this proclamation for National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Whereas workplaces welcoming of the talents of all people, including people with disabilities, are a critical part of our efforts to build an inclusive community and strong economy, and whereas in this spirit, the city of Durham is recognizing National Disability Employment Awareness Month in October, and whereas the city of Durham's Mayor's Committee for Persons with Disabilities will honor employers who recognize the value and talent people with disabilities add to our workplaces and communities during this month. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Schull, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim October 2018 as National Disability Employment Awareness Month in Durham, and hereby urge employers, schools, and other community organizations in Durham, North Carolina, to observe this month with appropriate programs and activities, and to advance its important message that people with disabilities are equal to the task throughout the year. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina, this 15th day of October, 2018. I want to thank um, the mayor, city council, Ms. Deborah Giles. Um, and I'd like to also remind everybody of our annual event that we are planning to be held here in city council, in the city hall, city chambers, October 25th begins at 6 o'clock p.m. with the refreshments to be served later. Once again, thank you. Marcella is the chair of our, uh, the Mayor's Committee for Persons with Disabilities, and uh, it's great to have you here. And it was also a wonderful event this past Saturday, Disable the Label at Northgate Mall uh, that many of you all attended. And our next proclamation is for Indigenous Peoples Day. And I'm going to ask uh, Councilmember Deidreana Freeman to join me, and I see she already has, <laughs> as, well as, as well as Tribal Chairperson William A. Tony Hayes from the Okanichi Band of the Saponi Nation. Nice. Thank you, Mayor. Whereas Indigenous Peoples Day was first proposed in 1977 by the delegation of Native Nations to the International Conference on Discrimination Against Indigenous Populations in America, and whereas the United States endorsed the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, the Declaration on December 16, 2010, and the Declaration recognizes that the Indigenous people have suffered from historic injustices as a result of the inner alias, their colonization and disposition of their lands, territories and resources, and whereas the city of Durham recognizes that it was founded and built upon lands first inhabited by the indigenous peoples of this region and acknowledges the honors, acknowledges and honors these members of the community, both past and present, Native American tribes, the Eno and the Okanakanichi related to the Sixapa lived farmed establishing, lived and farmed, establishing the molding Durham settlement sites, transportation routes, and environmentally friendly patterns of natural resources, <clears throat> and the ancient Native American villages named Ashnutter, according to the North Carolina collection of the Durham County Library, and whereas a growing number of cities and towns in the United States have recognized the second Monday of October as Indigenous Peoples Day, an opportunity to learn and celebrate indigenous heritage and resilience. And whereas the city of Durham recognizes that the indigenous people of the lands that would later become known as the Americas have, have occupied these lands since this, since this time in memoriam, without whom the creation of this country would not be possible. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Mayor of the city of Durham, North Carolina, do here proclaim 
October 15, 2018, as Indigenous People Day in Durham, and hereby urge all citizens to honor and distinct heritage, honor the distinct heritage of the Indigenous community and their contributions to our city, state, and nation, and by participating in relevant ceremonies, activities, and programs. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina, this 15th day of October, 2018. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Council uh, Member Freeman, Mr. Mayor, City Council, and staff. Uh, I, is, I am Tony Hayes. I'm the tribal chairman of the Okanichi Saponi, Saponi Tribe, and I accept this recognition on behalf of the Okanichi Tribe and all the Native citizens living, working, and contributing around the Durham area and the surrounding triangle. I accept this award and I'm touched by this in the spirit of an ongoing effort of reciprocal inclusion. Thank you so much. Thank you to Council Member Freeman for bringing us that important proclamation. I'm wondering if the Boy Scouts present are members of the Okanichi Council. Are you all members of the Okanichi Council? I was also a member of the Okanichi Council a long, long time ago, uh, and uh, so it's good to, it's great to make that connection uh, with the indigenous peoples of North Carolina, and thank you for being here. Um, now we're going to move to our neighborhood spotlight recipient, uh, Senor, Senor Luna, uh, por favor venga y unase a mí en el... Microfono, uh, y por favor traiga a cualquier miembro de su familia que esté con usted. Familia? Victor Vasquez Luna es el recipiente de la luz pública de vecinos para el mes de octubre en el año 2018. Este programa reconoce a residentes en Durham que han ido mucho más allá para me mejorar las comunidades de Durham. Este mes, Victor Vasquez Luna, un residente del Boulevard Norte Miami, Fue nominado y elegido por el maravilloso trabajo que ha hecho en su vecindario, incluyendo cosas como uh, siempre preguntando cómo puedo ayudar a sus vecinos y seguir adelante, proporcionando ayuda y asesoramiento. Uh, I struggled with that one earlier today as well. No solicitados a sus vecinos con proyectos y reparaciones del hogar. Por hablar con so sus vecinos sobre la importancia de la comunidad entre sí y ser un miembro de la comunidad que los apoya, compr comprometido a unir a su vecindario. Abogar, abogar por sus vecinos y vecindario y ayunda, ayund ayudando a mantenerlo limpio y hermoso. Felicitaciones, señor Vázquez Luna, por ser la luz pública de, de vecinos para el mes de octubre en la ciudad de Durham. Gracias para todo el trabajo que hace para mejorar la comunidad de Durham. Um, si hay otros residentes que han venido para apoyar al señor Velázquez, uh, por favor, se and in English, since I know you don't understand my Spanish very well, and neither did the Spanish speakers, <laughs> Victor Vasquez Luna is the recipient of the Neighbor Spotlight for the month of October 2018. 
The Neighbor Spotlight Award recognizes community members that have gone above and beyond in volunteering their time to serve the community. This month, Victor Vasquez Luna, a resident of North Miami Boulevard, was nominated and selected because of the wonderful work he has done in his neighborhood, including, but not limited to, always asking how he can help his neighbors and following through by providing unsolicited help and advice to his neighbors with home projects and repairs, for speaking to his neighbors about the importance of community amongst each other and being a supportive community member committed to bringing everyone together, advocating on behalf of his neighbors and helping to maintain a clean and beautiful neighborhood. Congratulations, Mr. Vasquez Luna, on being the October Neighborhood Spotlight for the City of Durham, and thank you for all the work you do to improve our Durham community. And we're glad to have uh, the other residents of his neighborhood and friends who have shown up in support. Uh, we're glad to have you here tonight. And uh, I am going to now turn the microphone over to Mr. Vasquez Luna. And uh, Carmen Ortiz is going to be translating for us. So, Mr. Vasquez Luna, Senor Vasquez Luna. Okay. Okay. Oh, buenas tardes a todos. Uh, aquí presente, este, me siento muy contento por estar aquí con ustedes y... Good evening to all of you. I am very thank you. Thank you for having me here and I'm very happy to, to be here with you. Y que uh, también estamos muy agradecidos y contentos que tomen en cuenta la comunidad latina porque pues nosotros ahora sí que venimos a este país a trabajar y a colaborar también con, con la ciudad y tratar de hacer cosas buenas y no hacer cosas malas. Okay. Um, I'm very happy to be here and very thankful that our, the Latino community is acknowledged here. Um, we come here to work hard and be here. A llevarnos bien con todos los ciudadanos que viven aquí o vivimos en esta ciudad y, y comportarnos bien, hacer el bien y no el mal. To get along with everybody and to do well and, and to get along with our neighbors. Y le doy gracias a todos mis vecinos por verme acompañado y darme ese apoyo y tomarme en cuenta como un buen vecino. And I'm thankful for all my neighbors to being here and acknowledging me as a good neighbor. Gracias. Thank Eso you. es todo. Y gracias a Carmen y a Jason. And finally, our last uh, ceremonial item, and a night of beautiful ceremonial items, I must say, uh, is uh, we will now hear from our public historian, our former city council colleague, Eddie Davis, with a presentation. Gracias, senor mayor. <laughs> uh, I'm very impressed with your bilingual abilities. Uh, I think it's wonderful that we are able to hear the, a different language spoken. It gives us an opportunity to understand, if we don't understand, what other people may be going through often. Uh, so I appreciate your, um, your work. And hello to you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, members of the council, uh, Mr. Manager, Mr. Attorney, uh, Madam clerk, and all of the members of the staff and the community. <clears throat> In about one month, Durham, the United States, and the world will recognize and commemorate the 100th anniversary of the end of a multi-nation armed conflict that has come to be known as World War I. As the residents of Durham County approached the centennial of the Armistice Treaty, which was actualized at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, it is important for us to recognize that the very first monument that was erected on the square in front of the old Durham County Courthouse honors the soldiers and sailors who gave their lives during the time that the United States was involved in that war. The armistice, which refers to the putting down of weapons that are carried in one's arms, ended the fighting on land, sea, and air in World War I between the United States and other allies against the remaining opponent, which was Germany. Earlier treaties had been negotiated with Bulgaria, the Ottoman Empire, 
and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Although the armistice ended the fighting, it needed to be prolonged three times until the Treaty of Versailles, uh, which was signed on June 28, 1919, and took effect on January 10, 1920. The Durham World War I monument was erected through the efforts of the Junior Order of the United American Mechanics. By today's standards, this was not an inclusive organization and that's putting it mildly. Uh, that may explain why the names of the African-American veterans who died in the conflict are listed separately and below the white war dead on the monument. Also, the time period of the planning and the November the 11th, 1921 dedication of the monument was not particularly the, height, particularly the height of racial goodwill. The red summer of 1919 had brought about many lynchings and other killings within our nation, sometimes people wearing uniforms that were worn during World War I, uh, and they encountered violence here in this country. <clears throat> However, even with Durham's obvious segregation on the monument and other disparities, it must be said that in some areas of the state and the nation, <clears throat> World War I monuments totally ignored the military service and the loss of life by African Americans. With that said, many see the centennial of the end of World War I as a time to remember the, the, remember the Durham residents who served the nation in an effort to end all wars. It is important to know that 100 years ago, that was the expectation. So in 2018, let's propose that we work to have peaceful resolutions of conflicts within the world, within our nation, within our state, and of course, within the Durham community. In order to peacefully commemorate the end of World War I and to promote the concept of conflict resolution, I propose that houses of worship, civic and social organizations, and other groups simultaneously participate in an event that, we'll, that we can call Bells Across Durham on Sunday, November the 11th. Our participation will allow us to join many other communities in North Carolina and the nation in this centennial commemoration. Let's ring, chime, play 11 musical chords at exactly 11 a.m. to represent the armistice agreement that officially ended World War I at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, an entire century ago. This Durham County activity would mark a valuable teaching moment for young people, for middle-aged adults, for senior adults, for people from all racial and cultural groups, for religious and non-religious groups, for people across gender and sexual lines, for new arrivals as well as long-term residents. All Durham County residents would be invited to participate in an activity that would recognize and pay tribute to the veterans who helped to fight tyranny around the world. These Durham County veterans fought for democracy even though a great deal of work needed to be done at that time and still needs to be done to bring about equality and respect within all aspects of our county, our state, and our nation. Let's collectively ring the bells with with that goal in mind. I hope the city council can give consideration to the possibility of a proclamation supporting bales across Durham, the bales across Durham concept at your first meeting in, in November. I want to thank you in advance for your wise deliberation and your consideration of the promotion of and participation, participation in this event. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, council member. So much appreciate this history moment. Thank you very much, Eddie, our public historian, for being here again for another history moment. And uh, it bells across Durham idea is a great idea. <clears throat> and uh, I know that there are a lot of people uh, out there watching this meeting and will be watching recordings of it. And uh, I think you brought a great message. And I hope our churches and others will uh, pick up this uh, pick up this challenge. And we will be. Uh, 
looking to you maybe to help us with some wording for the appropriate proclamation. So thank you very much. All right, we had a lot of ceremonial items, but they were great ceremonial items tonight, and I uh, appreciate everyone uh, for being here for these. Um, and now we're going to move to announcements by the council. Uh, any, any, any announcements by council members? Council Member Reese. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. I wanted to make sure folks uh, in Durham were aware that there's an election going on, and uh, one-stop early voting begins here in the city of Durham this Wednesday, October 17th. Uh, early voting is a great, great way to participate in the election. It lets you create a plan in advance, uh, one that's convenient for your schedule, uh, and avoids potential problems and long lines on election day. Uh, so I like to encourage folks to use early voting. You can find the schedule uh, by going into Google and searching Durham early voting. That'll take you to the Board of Elections website here in Durham County where there is a list of uh, locations uh, for early voting, uh, the Board of Elections, three of our county libraries, and then locations at both Duke University and North Carolina Central University. Uh, you can also early vote any day between Wednesday, October 17th and Saturday, November 3rd, although uh, times do vary on the weekends. Uh, it's really important to make a plan uh, how you intend to vote, how, to get to the, how you're gonna get to the polls and what day, and then go ahead and execute that plan. So I encourage everyone to get out to the polls. You know, Mr. Mayor, I know you've heard many times, and I have, that a particular election is the most important uh, one of our time. I happen to believe that's true every time that there's an election because that's the only one you've got to vote for right then. So I encourage people to get out and vote uh, this year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Council Member Reese. Any other announcements? Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council Member Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, sir, and good evening to my colleagues. Um, Mr. Mayor, one day last week at about 7 o'clock in the morning, I boarded a bus with Rhonda Parker, the director of our Durham Parks and Recreation um, Department and staffers to tour uh, parks around Durham. And I, I wanted to send a, a major shout out uh, to Rhonda and her, her team for what they do. Um, growing up, I grew up in a very tough neighborhood in Brooklyn. There was a constant struggle for our open spaces in our city. Uh, for those who wanted to engage in commerce that wasn't credentialed, and kids who just wanted to play. And I didn't realize it then, but it was our, the Parks and Recreation Department that really set up a bulwark uh, for us in the neighborhood. Their rec centers is where we went and got free lunch during the summer and their organized sports activities. It was just so important in my life, and I'm realizing now um, just the important role that Parks and Recs plays, and I, I reflected on how important it was in my life as, as a youth. So I just wanna uh, encourage all of our citizens, all of our residents, uh, that are in here tonight, that are watching uh, around the city tonight to take advantage of our great parks. Uh, they want to hear from you. Go and visit our parks and use them. And if there's something that needs to be done or fixed there, the Durham Parks and Recreation Department wants to hear from you. They're engaged, uh, they're passionate, uh, and they're lovers of this city. So I just want to shout them out for letting me hang out with them really early uh, last week. Uh, Mr. Manager, you've got a great team over there. You already know that. And I just want to encourage all of us to support our Parks and Recreation Department. I know that Long before I got here, you guys did a half penny uh, for, to support uh, Parks and Rec's uh, initiatives. I think it's money uh, well spent, and I hope that we will continue uh, to make it a priority for our city for the sake of our youth who are coming behind us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Council Member. Any other announcements by Council Members? I have a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank our city employees who once again were called upon uh, to deal with the aftermath of a storm. And uh, I heard today uh, just recently from um, Kevin Lilly and Alex Johnson, we hear that we had something like 54 trees down that mm -hmm. our urban forestry folks had to deal with. Uh, we had lots of other conditions like that. We didn't have the flooding that we had in Florence, thank goodness. Uh, but this was very difficult work, and I'm very appreciative of our of our city employees uh, for your for your wonderful work under these circumstances. Thank you. I also want to recognize the work of, of Duke Energy and the employees of Duke Energy, the linemen, uh, the the people driving the trucks, and all the other folks. Their contractors who mm -hmm. dealt with all the debris and the trees. Um, uh, is, is Mr. Rick Grant here from Duke Energy? Thank you, Mr. Grant. We are pleased to have you. 
Uh, Mr. Grant is the general man manager of this area and is in charge of the linesmen who've been doing the work. I also see Indira Everett here. Indira is our district manager, and many of us know her very well for all her civic contributions. Let me just tell you a couple of things that, uh, a couple of facts that I have learned. There were 43,500 homes and businesses out of power uh, as a result of, of, uh, of this recent storm, and Duke uh, put 500 people in the field. 200 of them, as I understand, from Durham, 100 from the mountains, a couple of hundred from elsewhere uh, to get our power back up and running. Uh, it was completed uh, by Sunday night. Mine came back on Saturday night. I was, I have to confess that I was really ready for it to come on when it did uh, and <laughs> grateful for the good work of the Duke Energy folks for getting it done. Um, 43,500 homes and they were all back up and running in, a, in, a, in less than three days. So I just want to be, uh, express my gratitude to the folks at Duke Energy and especially your frontline folks, and I, and I hope you will pass on our gratitude. So thank you. <laughs> I, um, my second announcement um, is a sad announcement. We, we lost uh, a, uh, on October the 5th, uh, we lost a civic champion of Durham of many, of long standing in many years. Uh, Mr. Dillard Tier passed away on that day. Mr. Tier uh, was married for 76 years to his wife, Mildred Roycroft Tier, his, also his high school sweetheart. Um, and Mr. Tier was one of the people that made the Raleigh Durham Airport happen in very many ways. He served on the Raleigh Airport, Raleigh Durham Airport board for 31 years and was a real, a real uh, important contributor to the creation of that institution. He was also a member of our county commission uh, and did many, many other uh, wonderful things for our, for our city. Uh, we will be memorializing Mr. Tier uh, at, a, at a future city council meeting for his contributions, but I did want to uh, just uh, ask you all now for a moment of silence to please uh, join me in remembering Mr. Dillard Tier. Thank you. And the final uh, announcement I have uh, is that the city council uh, met uh, and evaluated our city employees as we do annually, uh, and we uh, have settled on their raises. All three of our employees, our city manager, our city attorney, and our city clerk have done outstanding work, uh, and we are very, very fortunate to have them in the capacities in which they serve. Uh, and I'm now going to... Uh, announce the, uh, the pay that we have uh, voted for them in this coming year, and then I'll accept a motion uh, from a council member to, uh, to approve this. Uh, for the city manager, $243,503. The city attorney, $223,982. The city clerk, $92,700. And I'll accept a motion to approve those. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. The moved and second that we approve the salaries of our three employees. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. And again, I want to just thank you, Madam Clerk, Mr. Attorney, Mr. Manager, for Thank you very much. great year, another great year in the city of Durham, and looking forward to much more of the same. And so we really, really appreciate the work that you do. Okay, um, I'm sorry, I usually don't give that many announcements, but it happened tonight. Um, and now we're gonna move to uh, priority items by the city manager, Mr. Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, take this opportunity uh, during the uh, priority items to remind everyone that the Durham Police Department in conjunction with the Durham Emergency Communications Center, will hold a community grand opening event for the new Durham Police Headquarters and 911 Center on Saturday, this coming Saturday, October the 20th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, the event will take place at the new headquarters, 602 East Main Street. The entire Durham community is invited to take part in this historic occasion. It will be a grand opening that will include facility tours, food, entertainment, and a number of activities for people of all ages. 
Uh, there is an official ribbon cutting ceremony that will be held at 12 p.m. noon on Saturday. And uh, we encourage everyone in the community to come out and join the police department and the 911 communications department to uh, celebrate the opening of this, uh, this great facility. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Manager, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, uh, Mr. Attorney, any uh, priority items? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, no priority items. Madam Clerk. Good evening, Mayor, Council, City Manager Bonfield. <coughs> I do have one item, and it is to give the oath of office to David Dixon, if he's here. Mm, yes, he is. I state your name. I, David Dixon. Do hereby solemnly affirm. Do hereby solemnly affirm. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially. <laughs> and that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of my office. Discharge the duties of my office. As a member of. As a member of. The Racial Equity Task Force. The Racial Equity Task Force. So help me God. So help me God. I have read. I have read. Understand. Understand. And subscribe to. And subscribe to. The Code of Ethics of the City of Durham. The Code of Ethics of the City of Durham. Congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Dixon, thank you very much, and we're very much looking forward to your service. Uh, and now we will move to the consent agenda, um, and that consent agenda can be approved by a single vote of the council. Uh, uh, any council member or member of the public can also remove an item from the consent agenda, which will then be moved to the end of the to the end of our agenda for uh, discussion and decision at that time. So I'll read the consent agenda items. Item one, approval of city council minutes. Item two, Human Relations Commission appointment. Item three, resolution granting consent of, to Piedmont Electric Membership Corporation to serve as exclusive provider of electric service to area assigned to Piedmont Electric Membership Corporation, Corporation by the North Carolina Utilities Commission. Item four uh, is approval of Durham Community Land Trust, Inc. to receive a grant to rehabilitate substance rental units in in North East, Northeast Central Durham and execution of an agreement with Durham Community Land Trustees. And this item has been pulled uh, by a, um, a member of the public. Item five, request to extend the street impact fee credits issued to Reveille LLC for the park at South Point project. This item has also been pulled by a member of the public. Item six, an ordinance to establish a permitting procedure to regulate the operation of shared active transportation companies within Durham. This has also been pulled by a member of the public. Item seven, ordinance amendment to the city cross-connection control program to establish definitions pertaining to accessibility and irrigation systems. Item eight, contract with Four Seasons Demolition, Inc. for the demolition of decommissioned wastewater treatment facilities, WWTFS. Item nine, resolution authorizing the city auction. Item 10, cooperative group purchases program for five automated refuse collection vehicles. <coughs> Excuse me, item 11, contract with Transource, Inc. for dump trucks with snow plows and spreaders. Item 12, contract with Lanier Tree Services, LLC, for the removal of city trees. Item 13, contract amendment number three for ST257C, contract administration and construction inspection services, uh, Horvath Associates, PA, for the Carver Street Extension Project. Item 14, this item can be found on the general business agenda, public hearings. You've heard the consent agenda, and I will accept a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of items four, five, and six. I move to the roof. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Madam Clerk, I believe we have a member of the Human Relations Commission that we just voted on who is here present tonight. Would you be able to, uh, to, to uh, administer the oath of office to that person? Mr. Pierce Freeland? That's great. Mr. Freeland, would you please uh, come forward and um, our clerk will uh, administer you the oath of office for the Human Relations Commission. Would you like to 
we all have fun. All right. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Where's your right hand? Because you're right handed in front of you. Left hand in the middle. Mm -hmm. Where's your right hand? Hi, <laughs> state your name. I, Pierce Freelon. Do hereby solemnly <clears throat> swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of my office. Discharge the duties of my office. As a member of the Human Relations Commission. As a member of the Human Relations Commission. So help me God. So help me God. I have read. I have read. Understand. Understand. And subscribe to. And subscribe to. The Code of Ethics of the City of Durham. The Code of Ethics of the City of Durham. Very good. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Come by in the morning. Thank you for the documents. Okay. Thank Mr. Freelon, we welcome you to the Human Relations Commission and uh, look forward to your good work. And now we will move to item 14. Uh, which is uh, under the general business agenda public hearings, the zoning map change for 6919 Herndon Road. Good evening. I'm Carla Rosenberg with the Planning Department. Um, a request for a zoning map change has been received from the City of Durham's General Services Department for one parcel totaling approximately 2.2 acres located at 6919 Herndon Road. The applicant is proposing to change the parcel from planned development residential 3.322 to residential suburban 20 to allow construction of a fire station. No development plan is included in the proposal. However, the applicant will be required to seek a minor special use permit from the Board of Adjustment to allow for this use in the proposed zoning designation. The proposed zoning is consistent with the current future land use map and therefore does not require a plan amendment. Staff determines that requests are consistent with the comprehensive plan and, and applicable policies and ordinances. The Durham Planning Commission at their August 14, 2018 meeting recommended approval of the proposed by a vote of 13 to zero. I'm happy to Thank you, Ms. Rosenberg. Questions. Can I ask you, uh, I don't believe that you notified us about whether or not the proper notifications to the public were issued and so forth. Would you like to make a statement about that? Uh, sure. Um, I don't uh, good evening, Pat Young with the Planning Department. On behalf of the Planning Department, I can certify that the public hearing item before you tonight has been advertised in accordance with the requirements of law, and there's an affidavit to that effect on file with the Planning Department. Thank you very much, Mr. Young and Ms. Rosenberg. Uh, you have heard the uh, presentation of staff, and I'm now going to declare this public hearing open. Uh, and ask if there are members of the council who have any questions uh, or comments for staff at this time. If not, I'm going to ask, I don't have anyone signed up, but I'm going to ask if there are any members of the public who would like to speak on this item. Are there any members of the public that would like to speak on item 14? Any members of the public who would like to speak? If not, I'm going to declare this public hearing closed and the matter is back before the council. I'll accept a motion to uh, adopt a consistency statement as required by NCGS 168-383. So moved. Second. Okay. And moved and second to adopt a consistency statement. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you. And now I accept a motion to adopt an ordinance amending the Uni Unified Development Ordinance. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. Again, the motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Rosenberg. All right, we'll now move on to item four, the Durham Land Trustees. Uh, this is Durham Community Land Trustees. This is the item approving the Durham Community Land Trustees to receive a grant to rehabilitate Rental units in Northeast Central Durham. And uh, this item was pulled by Ms. Victoria Peterson. Ms. Peterson, welcome. You have three minutes. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, I'm Mrs. Peterson, Victoria Peterson. I have several concerns. I just want to just find out what we're doing here. 
It looks like it's about set. It's about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Let me put my glasses back on. I am. Uh, I'm still dealing with some eye issues, and the light really bothers my eyes. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's a lot of money, but we do have a lot of houses here. I'm sure over in that part of Durham that needs to be redeveloped, fixed up, or whatever. The problem that I'm starting to have, and I've been having for a little while, we have a lot of young men, African-American young men in this community that needs jobs. Miss Weeks was murdered in my community about three weeks ago. We've got to get these guys and gals off these streets. How she was shoot, because the boys were shooting and running after one another, a Mr. Mayor and city council members. I would like to see this city, and I've been here numerous times, I haven't been here lately over the last several months, a year. We need a vocational training program that young black men will learn construction and carpentry to how to come in and work with this group that's going to receive $750,000. Now, they do work with Habitat for Humanity, and I understand that, but that is basically volunteering, and there's nothing wrong with that, Mr. Mayor. But we need to give our young men in this community some employment. These are tax dollars. I'm sure they're either federal or, or, or local dollars. The other problem that I'm having is that, Mr. Mayor and City Council, Another person died in my community the other week in, in one of the buildings that housed, and she was renting a room. And Mr. Young already knows about that situation. And I'm hoping that he, and I think I may, might have even called you Mr. Mayor about it. Somebody walks up into her facility where she's living in a rooming house here in Durham, okay, and shoots her in the back of the head and murders her. That's two women. African-American women in my community that have died in the last 30 days. The police records are saying that 20-some murders so far has taken place in Durham. And I'm not even talking about the other kind of crime. It's good for programs like this to come into the community and rebuild houses. I'm for that, 100%. The problem that I'm having is who are the laborers? Are they putting our citizens, particularly our young men and women, to work? Do they have employment? There is a difference between volunteering and working on a job and at least getting paid 12 or $15 an hour. Mr. Mayor, you just don't know how I feel when a, a black woman was on her property with her family sitting outside and winds up dead. Miss Weeks is dead. Ms. Peterson. We've got to try to get some job training for these young men. This $750,000, the city needs to come back to this group and find out how are they hiring our local, our local kids, boys. Thank you, Ms. Peterson. And thank Appreciate you, Mr. Mayor. It. Yeah, thank you, and I understand the important points that you're making. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, I know that our staff will be uh, discussing with this group their appointment <coughs> practices, so thank you. I would like to now entertain a motion that we approve item four. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve item four. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I just want to want to thank um, Ms. Peterson for bringing her point forward, and just acknowledge that this is something that we've been trying to address, and multiple programs that the city is covering, and just know, noting it's it's not something that's falling on deaf ears. We are hearing, we are listening, and we hear you. Thank you, Council Member. All right, we'll now move to item five. The uh, this is the, uh, the park at South Point project, the request to extend the street impact fee credits. And uh, Mr. George Stanzial has pulled this item. Mr. Stanzial, you have three minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, members of council, George Stanzial, 115 Cofield Circle. Um, I sent an email to you all. Uh, first of all, let me apologize for not being at your work session. I was in Boston with the Urban Land Institute and I couldn't, couldn't be there. I know that you discussed it then. 
Um, I sent an email today, and I and I and I said a lot of things about this project uh, when it was when it was zoned, when it was rezoned. It's it's it was it was a project that was uh, kind of stopped during the recession. Uh, it was originally zoned 16 or 17 years ago. Uh, it stopped in its tracks during the recession. It was originally a mixed-use project with auto dealerships <coughs> as well. Um, we have never been able to find uh, uh, mixed-use uses uh, on this property. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is where the Johnson Lexus and um, uh, and the Honda dealership is right off at 751 and I-40. Last year, the council rezoned this property to all um, to all dealerships. Um, and I wanted to just give you some numbers um, based on just, just the, the, the kind of commitment, financial commitment this, uh, my client has made. 36 million, actually almost 80 million now, either uh, constructed or under construction. Um, total pro uh, property taxes paid 7,365, annual property taxes 500,000 a year. Uh, current annual sales six million two fifty. Current annual business property taxes twenty five thousand, uh, and uh, currently two hundred and thirty employees. Uh, and after construction of the current dealerships, about two hundred and sixty employees. So this is a project uh, that has made a significant contribution to to Durham in terms of jobs and taxes. And we're just asking for a, a continuance of our, of our impact fees so that we can get this project completed. Um, we, uh, we, we asked for a three-year extension. Uh, anything you could give us would be appreciated. Um, but this is a project that is now fully under construction. Um, after we're, we're building two new um, dealerships there now, a Volvo dealership and a Lexus pre-owned dealership, and then there are uh, a couple of other parcels left, one that Honda will expand on and one other parcel. So it's a significant project. It's, it's made a significant contribution uh, to, to the community. Uh, it has built on-site and off-site road improvements, and there's a very significant um, parkway that runs through the, through the project from 751 and connecting uh, uh, on the other side, and um, just ask your consideration for for a continuance. Thank you, Mr. Stanziel. Members of the council, uh, comments or questions, or I, perhaps I should say, uh, member, uh, sta any city staff members want to comment at this time? Mr. Judge. Yeah, uh, Bill Judge, transportation. Um, certainly understand uh, the concerns raised by. Mr. Stanziel, but the ordinance is very specific in the ability to grant credits. That credit, the extension can only be granted when it's due to the delay in a capital improvement project, and staff is not aware of any capital improvement project that delayed their ability to, to utilize those credits. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Judge, just to refresh my memory on this, and I know we discussed this at the work session, uh, this particular thing, but Tell me again the time period and explain the tolling again, would you? So, yes, there was a three-year um, period between January 1, 2008 and December 31, 2010 that, based on similar legislation and state legislation due to the recession, that basically suspended or told uh, periods of time for permits uh, to extend the validity. Um, the ordinance was changed uh, this section of the ordinance was changed a few years ago to extend those same three years to street impact fees. So, so just for the record, Mr. Judge, the, the original period that the credits would be eligible was for how many years? Yeah, so it was 10 years. It was originally issued in August of 2005. It would have expired in August 2015, but then with the three years extension, it extended it to August of 2018. So the 13-year period. 13-year 13 13, 13 period. 13 year period. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions, for council members, or or comments? Any questions for the? Uh, I would say the applicant, but it's not the applicant. Uh, any, any questions for Mr. Stanziel, or, or questions or comments for staff? Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Uh, Councilmember Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Stanziel. Can can you speak directly? Uh, because there's, there's a very uh, blatant assertion in a letter 
uh, from Mr. Routson attached to our uh, um, this matter that says that a completion of a major thoroughfare that was shown in the city's capital improvement plan at the time the credits were granted that has resulted in Reviel LLC being unable to utilize its credits. Can you speak directly to what that project is? I, my, and Bill, you might have to correct me on this. Um, my guess is, is it was that uh, there were some significant improvements to Highway 751. Um, and even some, uh, as a result of the, uh, the, the original zoning, there were some improvements that were required up at 751 and Highway 54. There, there were a number of different developers who had committed to some of those improvements um, up that way at 751 and 54. Um, there were, there was road widenings, there was a widening of a um, I-40, uh, I, I can't remember if it was the, the exit or the entry lane off of I-40, and then a uh, s traffic signal uh, put in at, I f at uh, 751 and South Point Auto Park Boulevard, which is where the sheets in the and the Lexus dealership is now. Those are the ones I can think of now. We did construct a major um, parkway uh, that has just, well, I think last year uh, was accepted by the city for maintenance um, that has very extensive landscape and, and uh, treatments and so forth. But Bill, um, can you help? Um, well, I believe, yeah, those improvements you refer to, those were all the ones that the developer constructed for which he were eligible to receive credits, mm -hmm. and that those were the ones that they received in 2005 when they constructed those improvements. So far as a capital improvement project, the only one that in this general area or vicinity that I was aware of in 2005 would have been the extension of Garrett Road, uh, or yeah, Garrett Road from uh, 54 to um, yeah, Hope Valley. There. Yeah, and I don't think and we that, were that involved was, with that one. No, but I'm saying the city did construct it. Yeah relatively on schedule. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> council members? Just a, council member Freeman? I, I, I just have two questions. Um, you're, are you asking for an extension indefinitely? Like what is? No, um, I, the application asked for a three-year extension. Uh, we would be grateful to have a one-year extension. And then one year you'd be able to complete this project? We would either complete it or we would give up the remaining credits. Thank you. Uh, just the second question. Uh, uh, can you remind me if this is the project where there was extensive like landscaping and like yes around the property so that it would not reflect that there was just a dealership there? Yeah. Th th thank you. There, there's um, the in the original zoning we made a significant commitment to landscaping uh, along 751. Um, this, you know, it was always in, it was always envisioned as a as an auto park, if you will, um, with only one dealership actually facing 751. Um, my client uh, expended a little over a half a million dollars in landscape and stone walls and so forth that you see right along 751 in front of the uh, the uh, Lexus dealership. And then if you turn in and you go down the it's probably about a mile and a half parkway. Um, there's extensive landscape there as well. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so based on our staff's information, it sounds like it would be a violation of our ordinance to grant this extension. Can you just confirm that? Um, yes, it's staff's opinion that the existing city code would only allow an extension to be granted based on a delay to a capital improvement project, and we're not aware of any, and they haven't referenced any this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, I'll, I'll just, a couple different things <clears throat> I want to mention is, uh, well, just one. Um, we've got to treat everybody the same. We have an ordinance. Uh, the ordinance is very clear. And the ordinance says that, that absent, and Madam Mayor Pro Tem just made this point, absent the um, completion of a major thoroughfare that delays the credit holder's ability to utilize the credits, there's no uh, 
that is the only exceptional circumstance under which these credits can be, uh, that we could delay the, uh, the use of these credits. Uh, and I feel it's really important for us that we treat everybody the same that comes in here according to our ordinances. Uh, and so I'm gonna be voting for the item. I, I appreciate and understand, uh, Mr. Stanzi, how your concerns and, uh, and your, and your uh, advocacy on behalf of the developer, there, there are a lot of good things about that development. And we have uh, done other things at the council to support that development, as you know, over the years. Uh, and, uh, but I don't think uh, in this case that I would be willing to uh, grant that exception. I think that the ordinance is pretty clear that um, we, and that we need to treat everybody the same, same that comes in front of us. We, we shouldn't be making an exception for those ordinances uh, unless there's some a uh, very compelling reason as, as this exception, uh, as, as such as this uh, one exception that it applies. Uh, and 13 years is a long time, uh, so anyway. Council members, any other comments? Can I, can I just? Yes, please. I just wanna caution us on the kind of comments around treating everyone the same, recognizing that equal is not always fair. And I, I agree, 13 years is a long time and I will be voting with you, but I wanna be cautious in saying that our ordinance is the reason that we're doing this, just acknowledging that All right, thank you. is not always equal. Thank you. Any other comments on item five? If not, I'll uh, ask for a motion to approve the staff's recommendation. So moved. Second. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Stanzian. Thank you. And we'll now move to item six, ordinance to establish a permitting procedure to regulate the operation of shared active transportation companies. And that is, uh, that item has been pulled by, I am really having a hard time reading this name. Mr. Esparza, is that correct? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I, tell me your first name. Servando. Okay, thank you. And could you give us your address, please? Yeah, um, 810 West St. John's Avenue. I'm actually from Austin, Texas. All right. Um, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, council members, I actually didn't mean to pull this, but now that we've pulled it, would like to say thank you for uh, working with us, other uh, scooter companies, uh, for several weeks, a couple months now. I want to thank you and applaud you for the time uh, that you've taken input from several different groups on, on creating this, this type of program. Um, and just wanted to uh, give a special thanks to uh, Councilmember Reese for your leadership on this. And then the city staff who has taken a lot of time um, and input from us to create this program. So just thank you. Thank you, Mr. Esparza. Uh, any comments, council members? Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Council Mayor Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There were some questions raised, um, and perhaps staff can address at our last work session some specific questions. Uh, one was the reconciling or the ability to reconcile the age uh, difference. The, I think Bird has an 18 year old um, rule, and our ordinance says you can be 16, as, as young as 16. And is there any, anybody from staff can address that? Good evening, Brian Poole, uh, Transportation. Yes, so our ordinance currently says uh, 16 or older. And so any scooter company could have an 18 or older pr provision in there, and they would not be allowed to rent scooters if they were um, under, under 18. But the other companies could do that. So we don't have any specific um, thing that, it, it's not, it wouldn't be in conflict. It would just be the choice of the company. They have to at least be 16, but they could say that they can be 18 and, and that's not a conflict with you. Right. And I think my query was the, the how amenable was Bird to that? Uh, is there any flexibility in your, in your age? Thank you. Uh, at, at this point, we're not changing that. The majority of it is just because most of the cities that we operate as, uh, that we operate in, we have to, it's 18 and up. Um, however, I did note to our uh, Trust and Safety Department and our Product Departments two things that um, we heard loud and clear from this council was the option to either lower the age and then the um, accepting other types of documents. Right now, we only accept driver's licenses, 
Um, and then what we heard from the council was that valid IDs and, um, and other types of identification, including the faith ID, whether or not we could accept those. I've raised that with our company to see if we can include those in the so you don't have a definitive answer tonight as to whether no. or not you no, do not. Because I kind of thought that was that that was that was put on your plate per our last work session that this council was very very concerned about the accessibility of the scooters and ID is one of those barriers that could could um, curtail accessibility from faith IDs to passports to student. There are a lot of people who don't have driver's licenses for any number of reasons. Uh, absolutely, understood. I, that that the, what I got from the company was is this is just company wide, and what I've told them is uh, we've got this request from the city to make these adjustments. So I'm getting that answer from them. Well, well this is Durham. I, I appreciate what the company calls for. This is Durham. I, I so so do, do you have any any? Can you prognosticate as to when your company might have some some wisdom as to how they'll be proceeding on this? Not at this point. Sorry, sir. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, could I ask the city attorney or maybe uh, the assistant city attorney who has worked on this issue to clarify for the record what is in the ordinance in terms of the requirement uh, or the, the the requirement for identification from the companies that would uh, likely be licensed? Thank you. <clears throat> Fred Lamar with the city attorney's office. As uh, Mr. Poole stated to uh, <clears throat> just shortly, uh, the ordinance right now has the age limit. No, not the age, the, the ID. ID. There, there is not a specific requirement that um, companies uh, have a specific vetting procedure for identifying the riders. Um, we, don't, we don't specify in the ordinance how that should be done, although we do have requirements of the ordinance that, that uh, looks to companies to provide for means of allowing low and moderate income people to be able to use the, the, the scooters and devices, Payment although purposes, right. nothing related to identification in particular. So that's at the discretion of the company in accordance with the ordinance right now? There's That's correct. There's nothing stated in the ordinance. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lamar. Council members? Mr. Mayor, if mm -hmm. I'll, I'll yield. Counsel. No, 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 continue. Mr. Mayor, if I might, and, and Ms. Bird, I'm glad to see you here this evening, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but at our last work session, I, I think that I put quite directly a question about IDs. You, yeah, sure. And I don't think at that time you told us that it was a company policy, that it would just be driver's licenses at that time. I told you I wasn't for certain that I thought that they That's could take asked. other identifications, but that I would go back to the company and get verification. And I did, and I um, shared all the, the whole, there were like four different items that you guys wanted feedback and follow up on. I took those back to Bird and actually got their responses and shared those with Mr. Poole and the transportation department as well. And one of them was that at this time, they're only set up, as Mr. Esparza said, only set up to accept driver's license, but they are, it's a, it just hasn't been raised in other cities, so it's something that they are looking at. Unfortunately, it's not a, a definitive, yes, we can accept them tomorrow, or no, we cannot, but it is something that they're looking into. And so that's what I passed along to Mr. Poole and transportation as well. But you, you did ask those questions, and at that time I told you I wasn't, that I thought they would take alternative forms outside as long as they were valid and, and issued by an agency, but that's what I would have to confirm. So let me just, uh, I'm sorry, council member, just no, go, go ahead. one second. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Um, so council members, what we're talking about here is our ordinance, not the policy of this company. I agree. And so, excuse me a second. So what we're talking about here is, is our ordinance. And we can have whatever ID requirements that we would like in our ordinance. Is that correct, Mr. Lamar? Um, I don't know how to answer that exactly. I okay. mean, I think that we, we we would try to put whatever requirements the council um, desired, if you specify what they, they are, and we would look into the um, uh, the feasibility of doing that and the, the legal Thank you for that. Great. So um, we did talk um, at our council member, as our, as our work session, as council member Middleton is, uh, uh, has been making the point of various use of various other IDs besides the driver's license, uh, including the IDs that, that uh, he discussed, 
Uh, and uh, I just think we need to figure out if that's important for us to put in our ordinance. If it is, uh, we can um, send us back and ask that, that we have some uh, new uh, identification, uh, allow different kinds of identifications as a, as a requirement uh, for the company. So that is one possibility that's in front of us. I don't think we can ask, I, I don't, in other words, this is not about what Bird's policies are. This is about what our policies are. And so we need to be thinking about our ordinance in that way. Uh, Council Member Creek. I, th I think you answered my question. I, I specifically wanted to just clarify that this was based on us. And what I'm hearing, if I'm correct, is that you're, it's a technology issue, not a, not a whether you would or you wouldn't. So am I understanding like there's a scan that happens for an ID and that ID scan is limited to the driver's license. You're looking into whether you would be able to do anything differently, but that's not, you know, the capability is not there right now. It hasn't been company policy to accept that just yet. And because of that, because it's technology driven, I would encourage us to make sure that we do have the ordinance in place and if we need, as technology improves to allow for additional IDs, we should move forward to add that into our ordinance but not put that in tonight because you wouldn't want to prevent other organizations from being able to provide the service or just hold off altogether so that we have no ordinance in place. So specifically, just because it's technology driven, it's not something that's not possible. It's, it's just not possible right now based on what their model is in their business, but I think it's, okay. it's just capability. Thank you. Mr. Esparza, could you come back? So I wasn't clear about your answer to Council Member Freeman's question. <coughs> is this technology driven? The issue with, if someone, <coughs> if someone, for instance, if someone has a form of state ID that is accepted similar to kind of like a driver's license, but it doesn't give you the right to, to drive a vehicle, that's easier for us to scan in a, in, in, a, in a timely manner that allows you to create the account. For an ID like a faith ID that is specific to Durham, that I have to go back to the team to see, and then we have to make sure that the team members that verify the types of identifications have the capability to recognize this and then understand that. So that's it's a lot more than just the tech, it's the behind the scenes, the individuals that are responsible to make sure that the person that created this account is the person who has scanned this type of form of ID and is a form of ID in fact, a faith ID that we, as a company, have approved as a form of ID. So it's a lot more complicated, which is why the timeline is uncertain for us, especially because um, it's been standard in other cities where we operate. Uh, and so when I brought this up to them, it's like, that's not out of the question, but that's something that the team has to have some time to look into to implement. Okay. Questions, comments? Councilmember Middleton? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I want to be clear. I'm, I'm not advocating to, to bring this to a grinding halt, and I am clear that we cannot compel you in terms of your internal company policy or culture, but my, and we can put whatever we want in our ordinance, but I, what I want to be clear is that you have an understanding of what the values of, I don't work for your company, I work for Durham, is that you, you have a clear understanding of what the values of Durham are, and my sense is that, I, it's a bit surprising to me that you guys would not have been conversant about this earlier in this process. Um, it seems almost like Eureka tonight uh, about when we asked about this, I asked very directly about this at our work session. So I, I, I want to be clear um, that I'm, I'm, not, I'm not recommending that it come to a halt, but I, I am a bit, um, a bit surprised at, at the, the level of, of detail tonight when we're supposed to vote, uh, when these questions were put very directly. And um, I'm sure this was already written down, this was already codified. Uh, in, in company uh, culture, so I'll, I'll just leave it at that. You wanted to? Thank you, Councilmember. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Reese. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to thank my colleagues uh, for doing a great job representing Durham, Durham's values tonight. I know that um, this is an issue that was raised at the work session. It's important. Um, I think what we're running up against is Again, I, I share Councilmember Middleton's um, surprise that we're the that this hasn't been raised before in other communities, um, and I appreciate how important it is to all of us to make sure that these devices are accessible to folks here in the city as possible. 
Um, I didn't want to uh, just say that I, I think this is, this ordinance is not the end of the conversation about these devices. This is the beginning of the conversation in a sense. Um, if we do vote tonight to pass this ordinance and then the staff moves into a permit process, I think that the conversation that we've had here tonight about different forms of ID um, and some of the other issues we raised previously uh, will continue with the vendors of these, of these devices. Um, and I think that is a conversation I look forward to continue to be a part of as a council and as a city. Uh, I think the, the direction that I think these, that these devices are moving is likely to be more accessible to more types of folks and not less accessible to fewer types of folks. I think one of the ways that we make them more accessible is by accepting other forms of identification. Um, and I think I, I, I do appreciate the folks from BIRD being here tonight to talk a little bit about how that conversation gets moved forward. Um, and I just know that they know and our staff knows that it's a priority for the council, for the people of this city. And we look forward to seeing what else you can do to help our, more of our residents uh, enjoy these devices. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, council member. Any other comments or questions? Any other comments or questions? Um, so I'm prepared to move forward with this tonight, but I am struggling a little bit to um, figure out, it, you all are going to be not the only purveyor of these, uh, Mr. Esparza and Ms. Bird, you're not gonna be the only purveyors of these uh, devices, but you will be uh, significant purveyors of them. And uh, it's, I'm struggling to figure out how we can uh, understand with some uh, level of, of, uh, of, of, of certainty uh, what efforts you all will be making along these lines within your company. Uh, can you give me any comfort on that? I can't speak for any other companies, but I will show all the folks that are in charge of making these decisions as part of this video to make sure it's loud and clear to them that uh, Durham City Council has spoken about the specific piece. Okay. If that gives you any comfort. Give me a little bit. Mr. Mayor, could I add one mm -hmm. bit of information? I, I haven't um, used the um, one of the, I haven't used any of the competitors for this service. I've only done bird uh, in Raleigh um, a couple months ago um, but I can tell you that I have used uh, Lyme for the bikes here in Durham and um, they didn't have a similar uh, scanning procedure um, I don't know if that if they have something separate in the app for scooters but it is the same app that Lyme uses for both the bikes and the scooters I'd be very surprised if there was some additional steps that you take um, so uh, I, I'm sorry that there's not a representative from Lyme here tonight, but I think, uh, I guess what I'm trying to suggest is it's entirely likely, at least in terms of what I've seen in the technology, that this is not an issue with Lyme's implementation. Mm -hmm. I think Bird has chosen a different route to, to do a scan of the driver's license, which I experienced myself when I uh, used them in Raleigh. Uh, just parenthetically, uh, I was rejected uh, because my driver's license had expired the day before. Um, but luckily for everyone concerned, uh, before that happened, over the weekend, I applied for a renewal license that was in the mail to me, and they let me print out a sheet so that wasn't riding dirty. Uh, and when I was driving, I could show that to law enforcement. I called the nice folks at Bird, um, spoke with a very helpful uh, customer, a service representative who showed me how to uh, bypass the scan of the driver's license and directly input my date of birth and other information. Um, and so I know that there are the possibilities of some workarounds if, uh, if folks are trying to use these devices. So anyway, that's all I had to say about that. Thank you. Any other council members? Can I just raise, raise another question? Sure, I, just, of course. I just want to be sure that you're, it, based on council member Reese's comments, are your services, um, your customer service support offered in both English and Spanish or multiple languages? I just ask, I just want to make sure. Thank you. Mr. Esparza, um, so we discussed the faith ID uh, at, at the uh, work session. Um, this is the faith ID. Thousands of people in Durham have this ID. Uh, I know that 
Uh, a year ago, I believe 3,000 people had already been issued the ID. I'm not sure how many there are now. And many of these people hold the ID, particularly because they don't have a driver's license. And it's important for us that these people be able to have access to these devices. <clears throat> I hear you on the issue of the technology, uh, and I hear you on the issue of the kind of ability to, sounds to me like, make exceptions for individual cities is really what part of the problem sounds like it is. Is that right? Yes, sir. Right. So uh, I just want to stress to you that uh, we will be looking for uh, your company, Lime, and whoever else is in the market uh, to be doing this work so that everybody in Durham will, uh, wh whatever their whatever their identification, whatever their immigration status and so forth, is able to use these devices. Uh, so uh, we'll be looking forward to, uh, to that, and uh, I'm sure this won't be the last that you'll be hearing from us on it. So thank you. Council members, Council Member Caballero. I just want to reiterate that I'm interested in beyond the face ID, and I think Council Member Middleton has also said that. My questions at the work session were around passports and driver's license and um, matriculas consulares as well. Thank you. So passports, driver's licenses, and uh, matricula consular. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with those? Correct. You should be able to find those. Okay. Any other questions or comments? If not, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Reese. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, approve item six, the ordinance to establish a permitting procedure to regulate the operation of shared active transportation companies. Madam Clerk, please open the vote. Please close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. If there are no other items to come, no other business to come before this council, the meeting is adjourned at 8.30 p.m.